Before we start building this control panel, let's talk about our setup, tools that you must have, and tools that would be really good to have. Now, I can't lie, I have built hundreds of panels with a good quality terminal block screwdriver, your basic universal wire strippers, and a calibrated torque driver. But as we learned in our control panel building series, there are a lot of better options as you start to get more production, such as these automatic strippers, these cable strippers, mm -hmm. and these two style of ferrule crimpers. And throughout this series, there is a link down in the description that will be an incredible resource for you to look back at and learn more about everything we're talking about in here. Now, as far as power tools, you will need at least a jigsaw and a basic drill. And I would get a multi-speed one that has a good quality chuck on it and has a little slip feature. That way, when you bind on something, you don't break the screw. It stalls instead. But another really good tool, if you can pick one up, is this impact driver here. It'll save us a lot of time, especially when you're using the drill tap combos. Speaking of drilling and tapping, there are two different methods that I use to mount components onto a control panel. In my thin panels, I use these drill tap combos. It has a drill at the top and then it taps as it goes down. That's good for a certain thickness. And when I go beyond that thickness, I use a good quality drill and tap. And get yourself a center punch and take that extra time and go ahead and center punch your holes. Now, two other ways I see people mount wire duck and den rail is self-tapping screws and rivets. I don't personally like either of those because throughout my career, I have done a lot of retrofits. And a basic drill and tap hole, we can easily get the screw back out. We can mount a deeper component. We can go and we can buy that screw. Whereas with a rivet or with a self-tapper, it's much more difficult. Speaking of wire duct, every panel should have wire duct, or I'll say every panel that probably has more than 10 wires in it should have wire duct. And you can take a hacksaw and you can cut right down through these slits, but trim them really well if you do. Now, as your production goes up, look at investing either in a handheld set of wire duct cutters or a bench top one. But with these, we can simply put them into the slits and we're done. And the one thing I see a lot of you not do in your non-UL rated panels is torquing your screws. 100% every screw in your control panel must be torqued. That includes the ones that wires go into. It includes where our enclosure. It includes where our panel mounts into our enclosure, our ground straps, and everything. So you will need a variety of these. Some will be these basic drivers such as this. Sometimes we need a little more torque. It'll be one of these. And we have 3 8 and half inch torque wrench also, just like you would work on a car. Now let's talk about electric torque drivers because these are incredibly cool and an incredible time saver if you use them correctly. First, let's make sure we're really clear. This is not approved as a tightening device for a UL508A rated control panel. And the main thing is... Are we sure how much battery life is left? If it's getting low, is it really torquing to the right amount? There are a lot of variables there, but what we can do is let's say our torque specification is 15 on whatever it is. We can set this at like 14 and we can get them really close. And then when our panel is done, we could go behind it with this one and check every single screw. Now let's talk about our setup here and the issues with this setup because we are at our training center. We are not at our shop for this build. So we don't have any carts to actually work on. So first of all, this setup is way too low. This is a standard height table and I'm gonna be sitting here working like this the whole time and this can be really rough on my back. So one, if you are gonna be in that situation, make sure that you do stretch out your back occasionally. But also if you will take your table and simply raise it up about 10 to 12 inches, that will be tremendously easier on you. Now, as your production goes up, you should look at a good control panel building cart most of those will have an adjustable height and they will also tilt up. That way we can be looking right eye level with it and keep our back straight as we're working. Make sure you get good lighting and look at some wire spool holders to help 
keep your wire in order and keep it from laying all over the ground. All right, next we're going to talk about laying out our panel and click here to learn about that.